Hello, everyone, and good morning. It's so great to be here with all of you today in beautiful San Francisco at Bioneers. My name is Alexandra Villasenor. I'm 16 years old and a climate justice activist. I wanted to begin by telling you that in the past 24 hours, I've completely rewritten my speech given the distressing current events in our world today. It doesn't do the situation justice to say, our hearts go out to Buffalo, when what we need to do is dismantle white supremacy and its disinformation complex in our society. I came here today to speak about working together and building coalitions of power in the global youth climate movement. However, over the past few days, I realized that I needed to back up because as we're seeing very clearly, the movement for a livable planet is actually many seemingly different movements for justice and equity. And the first thing that we need to do to understand in order to build power for a healthy planet and future generations is we need to realize that many movements are one. The climate movement is understanding that black lives matter. The climate movement is sovereignty over our bodies and the movement for reproductive rights. The climate movement is the movement for justice in Ukraine. The climate movement is the movement for migrant justice. But not only does the climate movement encompass the interconnected social causes for humans, but it extends into justice for non-humans as well. This means the climate movement is the movement for the rights of nature. The climate movement is the movement to stop ecocide. The climate movement is the movement against plastic manufacturing and pollution. The climate movement is the movement for the preservation of species and biodiversity. I started organizing for climate when I was only 13. I was only in middle school. My activism began when I joined Greta Thunberg and the Fridays for Future movement. In December of 2018, I began striking every Friday outside the United Nations headquarters in New York City and quickly began organizing internationally for the global climate strike movement in 2019. What happened back then is that we organized in an oversimplified way because we were advocating for people to only focus on the science. This messaging was encouraged by the older, larger environmental organizations that we were told to follow. They said we had to unify our message and all stand for the exact same thing. We were warned that without projecting this kind of unity, we wouldn't be taken seriously. However, we quickly realized that this wasn't enough. It certainly wasn't the best approach to building relationships and solidarity or making change. That's because in our movement, there is an uprising of voices telling their own unique stories about how the climate crisis was affecting them. I was one of them, telling my own story about the effect being affected by massive accelerating wildfires in California, their effect on my health and the health of the ecosystems that we rely on. Soon I met other youth activists, such as Mary Copany, who was telling her story of the poisoned water in Flint, Michigan. I met Shie Bastida, whose indigenous community in Mexico had been flooded by increasing climate fuel disasters. I met Kevin Patel, who you will be hearing from today, after me, and he taught me about sacrifice zones, which are the communities on the front lines of environmental pollution, much like his own community in South Los Angeles. I saw that the way we were taught to organize and advocate for the environment erased these voices, narratives, and experiences. I witnessed that when these voices were erased, the solutions that were proposed and even implemented didn't include them either. Actually, we often saw that the solutions put into place made the suffering of some communities even greater. We can't work together or build solidarity when people are hurt and left behind. Building power and solidarity is not about being the same or saying the same things or being a part of the same organization or concentrating our message into one message. As a society, 
we understand that the concentration of wealth and power is not good for people or the planet, and that it is just true for movements and organizing. The best way to build power and solidarity is to make space and amplify all of our different voices and experiences of being affected by the climate crisis. We build relationships by listening, supporting, and honoring each other, not erasing each other. A beautiful, healthy, change-making, revolutionary movement is a movement of coalitions and alliances of unique individuals and experiences on the front lines of every issue and injustice. And inside these coalitions and alliances, we must work to center and amplify the narratives of those experiencing the effects of injustice. This must happen in every movement. It's time for all of us to listen to the people who've experienced the injustices we're fighting, like racial justice, reproductive injustice, and migrant injustice. We won't make change by doing this work in silos. We won't implement the right solutions that are just and equitable without representation in our movement and decision-making spaces. We have to realize that we are all connected and take action together. <laughs> Finally, I want to let you know this work is hard. Coalition building means rising above our differences and collaborating with grace, patience, tolerance, and understanding. Thank you for the opportunity um, to speak to you all today. Together, our collective efforts will result in the strength, solidarity, and power to make the changes we want to see in the world, the changes for a livable planet and future. Thank you.